Now, we're going to move into units that are you know, much more meaningful in terms of what we'll be doing in chemistry. We're going to start with the metric system. I know you've worked with the metric system in the past, and you've probably memorized some acronym about King Henry, and we're not going to be using that. You can't simply push decimal places around in what we're going to be doing. Now, the next problem in your notes, I'm not going to work out in detail. The answer should be 7,200 groans. I'd suggest you work it out before you come to class so that you, again, know whether you need my help. Let's take a look at the metric system. We've selected some key prefixes for you to memorize. So you have to memorize these. Now, the prefix name is given here and the symbols given here. These prefixes are going to be attached to a variety of units, but their scientific notation equivalent is going to be the same regardless of the unit that comes after that prefix. So for example, one kilojoule is equal to one times 10 to the, min or to the positive three joules. 1 centigram is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 2 grams. 1 milliliter, 1 times 10 to the minus 3 liters. Micro, to, to write a micro, if you write a U and then put a little tail on it, you'll get the Greek symbol that we use for micro. And that is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 6 grams. 1 microgram. 1 microliter, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 liters. One microjoule, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 joules. It doesn't matter what the base unit is there. The prefix means the same thing. Now I want you to notice something else in how we've set this up to, for you to memorize. Do you see that the 1 is always placed in front of the prefix? So when you set up your factors to cancel, you'll always put the 1 in front of the unit that has a prefix with it. And you're going to put the scientific notation. So the scientific notation is going to be in front of the base unit. Might be subtly different than what you're used to memorizing, but I think this is a, a method that works well for us so that you're not flip-flopping that scientific notation as often. So in class one day, we came up with the phrase Saturday Night Live. I don't know if you like to watch that. That was very big when I was in college back in the olden days. And that means scientific notation goes by the lonely unit. The unit's lonely because there's no prefix in front of it. Uh, if you want to come up with another one and share it with the class, that would be great. That's the one we came up with. So there's no prefix in front. So we call that the lonely base unit. Now let's work a couple of one steps with this. And in a one step, we're just gonna go back and forth from a prefix to a base. So we have 32 nanometers. Remember, we wanna write it as that question mark. Sorry, that was a pretty poor nanometer. 32 nanometers is equal to how many meters? So that's a, use, that's a very small value. We're not used to seeing numbers that small, but that's a number that's frequently used in the semiconductor industry. So we want to know how many meters this is. Now remember, you start opposite your question mark always. This is one step, so that's pretty straightforward. So I only need that much in my problem-solving grid. I have 32 nanometers. I want to get rid of nanometers, and since they're in the numerator, I'm going to put them in the denominator, and that ensures that they'll cancel, and I want to get to meters. Now, remember, this is where learning it the way we did, look for a prefix. That unit there has a prefix. That's where the one is going to go. This is the lonely base unit. There's no prefix in front of it. That's where the scientific notation that you memorize for nano is going to be placed. And we're going to round that to two sig figs. Whoops. And we're going to get 3.2 times 10 to the minus 8th meters. 
a very, 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 very small fraction of a meter. We know it's a fraction that's less than one because that's a negative exponent. I'm sorry, I did a bad job on that fraction, but I think you get the idea. Remember, we're after learning, not perfection here. Thanks for being patient with me. So we know since that's a negative number, it's a fraction, but a small fraction of this. Now, let's try another one of these. You may want to stop and try it yourself and see if you get the same number that I get. Now, in this case, the question says, how many microliters are equal to 4.56 times 10 to the minus third liter? Again, we have a prefix going to a base, so we know it's only a one-step problem. I know that conversion factor. In theory, you've memorized it, and you definitely have to have it memorized by the quiz. So I have 4.56 times 10 to the minus third liters, very small amount, but a fraction of liters. I need to multiply it by a conversion factor. Notice I'm using the other method this time, for those of you who like that better. And since liters are in the numerator, right, there's nothing in the bottom, or you could think of it as an applied, implied one in the bottom, but liters are in the numerator, I want them to cancel, so I'm gonna put them in the denominator. Now I make sure that I set up my units correctly. Once I have my units set up, then I can focus on getting the values in here. So there's my prefix. I know that the number one goes by the prefix. There's my lonely base unit without a prefix. That's where you're going to put the one times 10 to the minus six liters that you memorize. And our answer to that, two, three sig figs, because our original value had three six sig figs, is 4.56 times 10 to the third microliters. Now, you want to make sure you've got your units there and your sig figs correct on that question. And I think we have time in this video. I'm going to just put the answer down for your next question. I don't think we need to model another one. You usually get this by now, but man, if you don't, I certainly understand it. This is new and I'm demanding a specific way of doing this. So I want you to give this one a try on your own. I want you to show it. I should see this worked out or at least attempted in your notes because you're going to be getting a notes grade on this. So how many grams is equal to 58 0.97 kilograms. I want you to set that up and if I've got my math right and you're going to let me know if I ever make a mistake. We don't want mistakes floating around on the internet. 4.897 times 10 to the fourth grams should be your answer. Now in the next video we're going to attempt two-step uh, two prefix to prefix.